see you. Uh, what made you, after seeing so many young girls, what made you choose to cast Quivenjane in the role? Um, well, we discovered a miracle. You know, it's like when when uh, when the light opens in the sky and shines down on you, you have to be uh, present and, and aware that it's happening. So it was it was totally obvious. You know that we had found somebody that was unlike anybody else we ever had seen or were ever going to see. So the spark was pretty instantaneous, you oh, think? Yeah. yeah, no, it wasn't It wasn't a subtle thing, you know. Um, <laughs> she was unlike anybody else we'd ever seen, as, as everybody in the world is now finding out. Exactly. You know, it's, Excellent. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. All thank right, you thanks. for being here. Yeah. Hello, Quivenjane. How are you? Good. You look absolutely beautiful this evening. Thank you. How does it feel to be the youngest actress ever nominated for an Academy Award? It feels great. It's not a bad thing to have, and it's all something I love. Are you enjoying all of this? Yes, it's all fun. Really exciting. What's the best part of all of it? All of it. Like, it's all great. It's like every single part is a great part to me. Do you like the part of getting all dressed up and... and... Of course. <laughs> I love your purse. Can you show it to me? Oh my God, that's so cute. Have you thought of what you'd say if and when you win the Oscar? Not yet, but it's probably going to be something different from yeah. all the rest. Is it going to be really exciting? Yes. Well, thank you so much, and congratulations on tonight. Thank you. Please welcome the president of the board of the Santa Barbara International Film Festival, Doug Stone. Good evening. And welcome to kind of the halfway point of the 28th uh, Santa Barbara International Film Festival. Tonight is the Virtuosos Award. It's a great evening, a chance not to see one person, but to see six people who had fantastic performances this year. The moderator for tonight, his third year in a row, he is the host of the front runners on Fandango, Dave Carger. Please welcome Dave. Thank you so much. It is my absolute pleasure to be back a third year hosting the Virtuosos. This is a highlight of my year. I love this crowd. I love this theater. I love this town. And it's a pleasure for me to be here. I will tell you, if there's one thing that our six very impressive Virtuosos can teach us, it's that when you're an actor, a breakthrough moment in your career can happen at really any time. It can happen in your first professional acting job, as it did with our Oscar nominee, Quivenjane Wallace from Beasts of the Southern Wild. It can happen when you're, let's say, in high school or college age, like Elle Fanning or Ezra Miller. It can happen when you've been at it for about a decade or so, when you're in your early 30s, like Eddie Redmayne or Omar C. Or it can happen when you've been toiling on stage, film, and television for over three decades, like Ann Dowd. It is a fantastic half dozen of actors tonight that I'm going to have the pleasure to introduce you to, but before I do, let's watch a highlight reel of their work. Okay, and we have one final virtuoso. I have never in my career interviewed a nine-year-old before. I am so excited. But first, let's take a look at Quivenjane Wallace in Beasts of the Southern Wild. Hush puppy. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the youngest Best Actress Oscar nominee in history, Quibenjane Wallace. Hi, how are you? Have a seat. Is that a stuffed animal and a purse at the same time? Yes. It's actually like a doll purse. Oh wait, we can't hear you. Here, you take mine. Yes, it's a kind of like a dog with some like things in it. Like someone had to make this with some good material. <laughs> if somebody wants to bring me an extra, can you hear that? Oh, good. All right, good. So we're all good. 
So this was a movie that you auditioned for when you were five years old. Do you remember why you were interested in acting in the first place? What was it about it that was interesting to you? This is the funny part. Um, <laughs> I really didn't like know, well I knew what acting was because I watched TV, of course. Um, so like I was just like kind of going through it and my mom calls me out of my room and I was like jumping and dancing on my bed. And she was like talking to my mom's friend and like everything had happened that way, so. Is that for me or her? For me, okay, keep going. Okay, <laughs> and she was like, you could, she was just like, they want you to go to audition for like six to nine years. I was like, sure, why not? Like, <laughs> it was just something I just wanted to try, so I just went after it. And did you think you'd be good at it? Or were you unsure of yourself when you went in to try out? That's a good question. Um, um, what I really would do is just like go in, kind of like be nervous, but like try to go in without being nervous and just be like, hi, how you doing? <laughs> That's half the battle, is just pretending you're not nervous. Yes, because I was underage. Right, you had to be six to audition, yes, right? Yes, and I was only five. Mm. <laughs> but I made it. You did. Thank God you did. I mean, so it's been a few years since you made this movie. What are some of the first things that you remember about actually shooting this? What's the first couple things that pop into your mind? All the scenes with seafood in it. <laughs> with they, seafood. they actually had to teach me how to open everything. So whenever it came to the scene when like they threw everything on the table, we did it and we kept eating. We never stopped. The director said, cut. We're just like, <laughs> Never stop. It was just keep going. And he was like, I said cut. We're like, we know. And then <laughs> kept going. <laughs> See, I, I've heard stories like on TV commercials, they have like a bucket next to you so you can just keep eating and then you spit it out in the bucket so you don't get full. You didn't do that? No, we were just like in the bathtub so nothing is neat. Right. So we would just eat and throw, eat and throw, eat and throw. <laughs> Was there anything that you remember about making this movie that was scary? Touching the big black pig. The beast. Yeah, the fat one. Right. The one I could actually like see. Right. Yeah, and, and was, what was it? How, like something that they just brought in? Whenever I was nose to snout, they actually kind of like did like a three, like, three dimension thing because whenever I did voiceovers I went and I saw like little clips to get the emotion and like they had little green monsters just like running on the screen so like they had to do extra stuff. I see but there must have been times like where the more far away shots where there was nothing there and you just had to pretend that there was something there or what was there? Um, our medical man was there and he had like a cardboard box on top of him and it had like a drawing of a beast. I was laughing <laughs> and like what I did was I took it and I was running it around. I was like <laughs> So it was very cool to see that. Um, in a few minutes, uh, I'm gonna be introducing you all to the co-writer and director of this film, Ben Zeitlin, who's here tonight. Um, and I, I wanted to ask you, how do you think he most helped you when you were filming this? What did he say to you or what did he help you do the most that you think helped with the performance? Um, he would tell me a few things, like he would tell me like a fairy tale or like something that would give me an idea of, uh, of it. And like I went along with it and so everything went like that. What do you like the most about Hush Puppy? the girl that you play. What do you think is cool about her? Um, she has a cool father. I love him. He's a good person. Um, and 
She just has like this personality that shows in emotions in the face, by body, and just in sometimes in just one word and two words, like beasted. And like they have those kind of words and you really don't have to say anything. And I, I like her that way, but in a few ways she needs to wear more pants. Because everyone here is wearing either a skirt, a dress, or pants. That's right. Like you. Like me. <laughs> and you. Do you, I don't. <laughs> are, are you someone who likes to play pretend in your life? And if so, do you ever pretend to be Hush Puppy? Or now, or now that you're done with this movie, you don't want to pretend to be her anymore? Um, I would love to be her. Um. <laughs> I usually play with my friends on the street, and what we would do was we would play school, and they would always put me as the student, because I was the youngest one. And now I tell them, I don't want to be the student anymore. I want to be the teacher. Yeah. Because then I can tell them something. <laughs> so it was just all fun, and like sometimes I go around the house, and like I go in my room, and like I see the orange underwear in my drawer. So, like, I love to see them all the time. It brings back memories. I like that. One thing I learned, um, I saw a, a TV show where you were talking to Ann Curry, and she came down to New Orleans and ate, I guess, crawfish with you. And then she also she talked to you and also Dwight Henry, who plays your dad in the movie. And I didn't realize that he is, he's like a chef and a baker and, and works at a, at a place down in New Orleans. What kind of relationship do you have with him now? Do you get to see him a lot? Um, not really, because like I'm at home and he's in New Orleans, but we come over here and we see each other a lot. Um, on set one day, we actually did like a cooking thing. Um, we did macaroni and cheese, chocolate chip cookies, which is for his bakery. Ah, nice. Part. Um, stuffed bell peppers. We did all that kind of stuff, and we all ate it together, and I was like, chef complete. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've made some other movies already um, since Beast that haven't come out yet. What is, is there something that you would really like to do now that you know, so many people know who you are and you have an Oscar nomination and this movie's done so well? What would you like to do next? Either another film with Core 13 or an animated film. Ooh. And I'm being like an animal. That'll be, that'll You'd be, be an fun. animal? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of animal is that? A dolphin. You I'm, didn't get that? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Do it again. It's not worth it. <laughs> You're right, I missed it the first time, it's my fault. And then I want to know, in this whole situation, the, the whole process of this, since the movie's come out and all these cool things you've gotten to do and shows you've gotten to go to, who's the coolest person you've gotten to meet? Um, actually, this is something that they actually tricked me with. Um, I was in the truck and they were like, we are gonna go to some meetings, and like we just finished like doing photo shoots, and we went, to like and form, and I had no idea. It's off of Disney Channel. I know you look confused. I don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> and what is it? It's a <laughs> and form. It's like advanced natural talents, and it's like with kids, and like they're in high school. Oh, okay. So you went there. You're still confused. I am. But um, what happened? <laughs> go there and it was like fun and I had no idea where we were so we had to get lunch and when we went the characters were there two of the characters were there Angus and Olive you still don't know who they are I don't. <laughs> um and it was just like fun to see them I was like where are we I thought we were like going to meetings why are we seeing these people I was like so confused and like whenever I saw them I was like there's something going on here. And then I thought about it 
a few, like a, a few things back, like I was doing like a photo shoot and they had a lady that was from Amform. So my mom must have planned it or something and like they were trying to like put a prank on me or something <laughs> and I kind of figured it out but I still had no idea where we were. So like I met China, I met one, I met, I think I met the oldest sister and like it was fun. I love it. Well, I think you're pretty fun. So thank, thank you for you. being here. Quibenjane Wallace, ladies and gentlemen. So now, we're gonna move a little furniture. You're gonna stay here with me for a second. And we're gonna bring out well, six I get to chairs. Chillax. What's that? Yeah, you can chill. <laughs> <laughs>